All right, it is 4.30 and I'm gonna get us started on this Edwards Elementary specific Return to Learn webinar. I wanna thank everyone, all of the participants who are on here today. Um, we know that there are a lot of questions when it comes to Return to Learn. And you know, as a district, we set up eight of these meetings. If you saw our timeline, this is our third night of, of hosting these meetings. And just speaking to the previous nights, there's a lot of information um, that is shared and we know that we you want to hear it from the building that your student is going to attend and so we just find really great value and not only this meet these meetings but having everyone attend and so thank you for that. I'm going to provide a bit of housekeeping. Um, my name is Eric Smith director of communications for the school district and I'm going to um, just do a little housekeeping before I kick it over to Jessica and her team at Edwards. As far as tonight goes I know um, the team at Edwards are going to present a lot of information and so um, we're going to give them that time in order to do that and then after that we're going to have an opportunity for questions and answers and we're actually going to be handling um, questions in in two different ways this evening the first way is through our Q&A and so if you look on the bottom of the Zoom platform, you can. there's a button that says Q&A, and you can actually type in your questions into that, and the team at Edwards is going to be monitoring that and answering them directly, even while the presentation is going on. Um, I would encourage you to pause um, putting them in right away, because some of those questions actually may be answered in the presentation, but if something does come to mind, you can certainly feel free to throw a question in there, and the team at Edwards will be taking a look at it. And then the second way that we're gonna be handling questions this evening is live and in person. Well, at least virtually anyway, on the lower left-hand corner of the Zoom platform, once the presentation is over, there's a button that says raise hand. And so once the presentation is done, um, you can raise your hand. Um, we will monitor and we'll be able to see and monitor who is raising their hand and we'll start working through those questions live as well. And so I'll be sure um, to let whoever has permission to ask the question, I'll let them know. And we'll start to work questions that way. And, and we'll likely be going back and forth between the Q&A and then raising questions because we know that there are a lot of them out there. As far as our timeline this evening, um, you know, like I said, we're, we're doing eight of these meetings um, this week. This is our third night of it, and we do have another meeting after this. And so for that reason, we are actually going to have to cap this meeting at an hour and 10 minutes. And so I'm going to be real close to being done talking so I can give it over to the Edwards team. Uh, but before I do that, I am going to point out one thing. A lot of the information that uh, they're going to share this evening is in their building return to learn plan. And I'm going to take a moment to show you, if you haven't seen it yet, and how you can find that. So if you go to our website at aims.k12.ia.us, or if you just Google Ames Community School District, you'll find our website. And right here is our return to learn page. There's a lot of information in here. If you scroll down a bit and hit plan, this is where you're gonna be able to find actually all of our building level plans, including Edwards Elementary. And so here it is. After this evening, the slides that are presented tonight will also be on this page. One other thing that I do want to show you is I'm gonna click back a couple under timeline. We have posted the times and, and Zoom credentials for all of all, all of our building meetings. So you actually may have joined our meeting by clicking on join via Zoom right here, but you can see all of our previous meetings from the other two nights. We are recording actually live to YouTube right now. And so we will post the link right there if you want to share this video later or just review it again. So with that said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna give it over to Jessica and her team. All right. I'm going to get my screen up. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. All right. I first just want to welcome everybody. Um, let me get it. Whoa, there we go. To the start of the 2021 school year. Um, and briefly introduce myself. My name is Jessica Sharp. I, um, it's my sincere honor uh, to serve the families within our community as principal of Edwards Elementary. I'm inspired by the community's dedication to provide a safe, caring, and enriching learning environment for all of our students. I appreciate and value the partnership as parents and guardians and community partners in guiding our students to success. Um, and although this year is gonna look Different than any other year, I look forward um, to a great year living the Edwards way. 
Um, I also, before we get started, just want to give a quick thank you to Superintendent Reisner and the district office administration for their determination and relentless commitment um, in the efforts to provide a safe uh, environment that's conducive to learning for both students and staff. Um, to the building leadership team, I want to thank you for your work this summer um, and the future work that we will continue to engage in as we navigate these uncharted territories. Um, I'm truly privileged to be able uh, to work alongside you all, so thank you. And to you parents, thank you for your continued support, your perseverance, your trust, your flexibility, um, and your grace as we continue to navigate the side effects of COVID-19. Um, we, we just truly do appreciate it, so thank you guys all. Um, real quick, I want to touch base on the district's purpose and priorities and Ed Edwards' mission and vision, um, our commitments and our values. I believe it's important to know that as our team took a look at the district's return to learn plan and we molded it into Edwards' building return to learn plan, we kept all of these statements at the forefront of our thinking. Um, we were and we will continue to be committed to equity, access and empowerment, trust, growth and results. A few calendar updates uh, before we get going here on the actual plan. Requests for remote learning, uh, which is the, the virtual campus, um, are due tomorrow. Um, so please get those requests in. Again, if you submit it, there's no approval process you've gotten in, but I do believe we've set it up so now you know um, you will get a, a confirmation that we've received your request. Um, return to Learn conferences are going to be August 31st through September 4th. Um, your teacher, your homeroom teachers, once those are identified, will be reaching out to schedule those. First day of school, no matter what model you choose, is going to be September 8th. And the last day uh, is, one second, is that better? <laughs> I apologize. Um, the last day of school is going to be June 8th. School hours this year are 8.30 to 3.10. I know now why. So every time I hit the space bar to change my slide, I turn my video on and off. So I apologize for that. Um, it's been, we've been asked, what can we do before September 8th, before our kiddos um, come into your building? How can we prepare them? Um, we, we ask that you get to know your staff by taking the virtual um, staff tour that's going to be sent out here um, within the next week or two. Uh, the Edwards staff slides and virtual tour um, are just a way to see the building to get to know uh, your teacher and the staff. We'll also be hosting our very first back to school reverse parade. A uh, tentative date for that is going to be Thursday, September 2nd from 245 to 345. Um, but we'll provide an exact date and more information um, in the near future. Virtual return to learn mini conferences, which also include kindergarten glimpses, again, will be the week of the 31st. Um, and then lastly, just a couple of mitigation steps we'll be taking as we re-enter our schools is wearing of face coverings and routine hand washing. So please talk with your child about wearing a face covering, have them practice wearing a face covering for extended periods of time, and practice those good hand washing techniques. The, our, our building leadership team has worked tirelessly to ensure the three models meet the needs of all of our Edwards learners. Um, so those models are the on-site, that's when everybody is, is, is in bricks and mortar. Hybrid um, is which what we're, we're gonna start our school year in, the phased hybrid approach the required continuous learning. And so that would be when we need to um, close a, a portion of our building down or we need to quarantine or we need to close all of our building down, we would go into remote continuous learning. And then we have our virtual campus, um, which is 100% online and that's parent choice. I. I briefly um, mentioned the phased hybrid. So we're gonna start the school year um, in the phased hybrid. Uh, we'll we'll evaluate, evaluate our ability to um, move to 50% capacity um, once we ensure we can give that safe instruction. 
Um, so your family is going to be placed into one of the four groups to attend on-site learning. One day each week, your child will be in the element elementary building receiving instruction, and the other four, three days, I'm sorry, the other three days in that phased approach, um, your student will be online uh, doing recorded lessons. Wednesdays in that phased approach, which is going to, we we're looking at the first four weeks of school, um, will be reserved for virtual meetings with students that need extra support for professional development um, and for our teachers to have time to prepare those online lessons. Um, choosing a model that best supports your uh, child learning style and your family needs is definitely a difficult decision. And we recognize that and we're committed to maintaining um, and creating a flexible transition between models. Um, so if you chose a virtual campus, the virtual campus initially, which is that parent 100% selected online learning, you'll have the opportunity to opt back to on-site instruction throughout the year. Um, we've provided some guidance and on what that structure looks like, including monthly deadline dates, which you can see in the slides. Um, this just helps us prepare and plan for all learners. Uh, the rolling deadline and the on-site um, deadlines can also be found online. For parents uh, who started the year on-site, we'll also have an opportunity to transition models if, if they feel desired. So they're on-site, they feel like they need to go to the, one, uh, the virtual campus. Um, please just allow 48 hours for us to accommodate, accommodate that need. Um, like I said, additional information can be found online uh, for those transition information. Visitors. This year, um, unfortunately, parents and volunteers um, will in general be discouraged from entering the school building. If you need to speak to someone at the building, please call the main office and we will uh, set up a virtual meeting. Um, we will do whatever we need to do to support you and your needs. We just can't do that in the building this year. Face coverings, all students are going to be required, all students and staff are going to be required to wear a face covering to the maximum extent possible. Um, we'll provide a face covering for each student, but if your child has a face covering and that's what they prefer, by all means, let, they can wear their own face covering. Um, it, we know that that then ensures proper fitting and it just fits them better, they're gonna wear it better. Um, if a student forgets their face covering, we have additional face coverings for their use. Um, families are gonna be responsible for cleaning them. We, we recommend that a, a student has a new, clean, fresh face mask or face covering every day. Um, so families will, will have to work through that and figuring out how to provide that clean one each day. Um, at minimum, um, the cloth mask or the neck gaiter is recommended to have two at school in case one gets soiled. Just have an extra one um, here at school. We can store the extra ones in a sealed label baggie with the kid's name on it so that um, we know exactly whose is whose. And then there are going to be some opportunities throughout the day where students can remove their mask. Um, such as like breakfast, lunch, recess, and then if there's opportunities outside where the kids can maintain a social distancing of six feet. Um, in efforts to keep track of the masks, uh, if you could write your kiddo's name um, on site, inside the mask or somewhere on the mask, um, will help us make sure that if a mask, mask or a, I'm sorry, a face covering does get lost, um, we can get it back to the rightful owner. Drop-off time is um, from at 8.10. Um, Pick-up then is at 8.30. Our, or, I'm sorry. <laughs> Pick-up time is not at 8.30. Drop-off time is between 8.10 and 8.30. Doors will open at 8.10. Um, students will not be let in early. So if we can get the, the drop-off time right around 8.10, I think that's going to be best for everybody to be able to maintain socially social distancing and get them into their classrooms um, appropriately. Once kids and, and staff and um, parents are on campus, on grounds, um, we do require a face covering. Again, if your child forgets a face covering, we, we've 
we've got them covered. They just need to let an adult know. Building entrances, we're going to entrance uh, or enter in different uh, spots throughout the building um, to keep that social distancing um, intact. So the bus riders will use the bus entrance, which is uh, on the north back north side of our building. Four, five, and K1 will enter there. Um, on the southeast side, K1 will enter. Northeast side is going to be two, three, and bus, car, and walkers will all enter there. Um, upon entry, your students are going to go straight to their building or to their classroom. We'll have signs out front, and we will have a lot of adults out supervising both outside of the building and inside of the building to make sure your children get into the building and get to their classroom um, safely and quickly. I know that that, as, as a parent myself, I know that that is a concern that you can't walk your child in, especially on that front that first day. But please know we, we've got your babies and we will get them where they, where they need to go. Dismissal time, then we're going to exit out of the same um, doors that the students entered in. We're going to stagger our dismissal. Um, we broke our, our, our teachers into three different teams. We've got team orange, team black, team gray. Your classroom teacher will communicate what um, team they are on and will dismiss according to that. So team orange is gonna dismiss at 305, bl team black at 308, team gray at 310. Um, again, students will use the same doors. Walkers, once we get out of the building, will um, exit the building. And, and, and head home. Um, if you are picking up your child in a car, we're going to, and, and we're gonna, we'll help, help you with this, but we're gonna keep the car pickup parking lot moving. It's gonna be one lane um, and, and we're just gonna keep cycling it uh, because we are in a staggered dismissal. You may have one child that's dismissed with orange and one child that's dismissed with, at gray. And if we park, then we're not going to be able to um, keep keep the lot um, move cars in and out accordingly. Um, so I, it's gonna we'll be there the first few days. Well, we'll be there all year. Don't get me wrong, but those first few days will really be there to to help cycle and navigate that. If you do feel the need to get out of your car, um, please park in the the appropriate parking uh, spots. Make sure you have your face covering on. Um, and then you will be able to use that other lane to back up and navigate then into the one lane uh, where you can exit uh, school property. All right, so at, at this point, um, I am going to hand it over to the experts, our Edwards teachers. Um, like I said, they've worked hard on this, um, so they've got, they've got lots of information to share also. Um, this is, good afternoon, this is Jackie Peeler, and I am one of the success teachers from Edwards, and I'm going to talk Jackie, about your mic is not on. Or your, yeah. your video's not on, Mike. Or yeah, it won't turn on either. Okay. So, yep. Um, first of all, the students and drivers both will wear masks. Students will be sat next to a sibling or by a classroom peer when possible. So someone else in their classroom, they will have assigned seats. Students will use hand sanitizer upon bus entrance and the buses will be cleaned two times a day. If you, at any time your student will not be riding, please contact Durham School Surface, Services and um, our transportation coordinator is Leslie Weeble. So if you have any questions um, about bus, you can go ahead and contact her. Thank you. Hi, Edwards. This is uh, Tanner Clute. I'm the behavior coach. Um, we're going to talk about late arrival and early checkout. Um, late arrival is any time after 8.30 a.m. Uh, please ring and wait for guidance from the office. Um, a revised check-in system will be established to minimize students 
time in the office, uh, parents and guardians, please call 515-239-3760 if you need to communicate with the building staff. Um, I will also post in the chat down here um, our two secretaries' uh, emails, Elizabeth and Marcy. Um, so early checkout, if a, if a student needs to leave for an appointment or for another reason, uh, please communicate in advance with the classroom teacher and the office um, if your child needs to leave or check out early. Um, if someone other than a parent is picking them up, please specify who that is. Um, upon arrival uh, at Edwards, call the office or get in that number. Um, the phone number that you give will be verified in Infinite Campus by an office staff. Um, the office will call the classroom and, this, and, one, and have the student come to the office to check out. Um, again, a, a revised checkout system will be established to minimize students' time in the office, and one of our staff members will accompany them to the front door. So that's how our late arrival and early checkout will um, happen. And I will, again, I will post our secretary's uh, emails in the chat here. Thank you. Hey, I'm Jackie Brooke, and I'm one of the first grade teachers here at Edwards, and I'll be talking about the classroom setup. Classrooms will have essential furniture and equipment to support the learning process and will be disinfected on a routine basis. Students will have an assigned seat, which will be six feet apart from other peers and align with the cohort scheduling format. Classroom traffic patterns will be established. The picture illustrated here on the slide is one example of a classroom setup. In the 25% capacity, students will sit every fourth desk and in the 50% capacity, students will sit every other chair. In both the 25% and 50% capacity, six foot social distancing is maintained. And I'm going to say that we have had a lot of creative classroom setup here that I've seen. So um, anyway, we have a lot of creative teachers here handling the classroom arrangements. I am Jody Lickhart. I teach second grade here at Edwards and I'm gonna talk about the school day. Uh, each student will have their own supplies, so you, there will be no shared supplies this year. Your child will interact with other students in their classroom. Um, teachers will, sorry, uh, students in the classroom, teachers, classroom teacher, success, ESL, ELP, and related arts, educational assistants, food service workers, that will all happen um, inside the teacher's classroom. Face coverings, students will be expected to wear a face covering throughout the day. Uh, students will be allowed to take them off, obviously while eating, uh, and also at recess in PE where distancing can take place. Masks will be provided for each student, uh, but like Jessica said, you're welcome to use your own that um, they're used to and have a good fit. Please write student's name inside the mask. Uh, students can wear their own mask, like it says down there. Lanyards will be breakaway lanyards that will be given to each student. They'll attach to the face covering and that way when it's time to eat or time for recess or PE, they can take them down um, and either, oh, sometimes kids tuck them into their shirt or they can just hang uh, and that will be on the breakaway lanyard. And here we'll talk about breakfast and lunch procedures. So for breakfast, students will wash their hands before and after eating. Uh, they will, um, and students will choose their breakfast for the following day at the end of each school day. And their breakfast will be delivered to their classroom. So they will not have to go through the breakfast line. Students will wash their hands before and after eating and then their desks will be cleaned after they're finished eating and they will still have choices available. And for lunch, the students will wash their hands before and after eating lunch as well. Students will go through the line. Items will be prepackaged and placed in a bag to take to the classroom. And then students' desks will again be cleaned after they are done eating. Good evening, everyone. My name is Austin Riedemann. I'm excited to be back at Edwards as the learning lead this year. Um, I'm very briefly going to discuss instruction here, um, but please know that more information will come during your child's return to learn conference. And as always, you can um, reach out to us here at the school with any questions that you might have. Our goal for instruction this year is to prepare through the lens of providing rigorous, equitable, 
virtual instruction to all students. While many of our delivery uh, models include students learning on site, all of our delivery models include on in, and engaging in online learning. Um, with this in mind, maintaining the lens of creating a virtual instruction um, ensures a seamless transition between on site learning and online learning. This brings us to the visual that you see um, on your screen. On the right side of your screen, you see a schedule for our virtual campus. This is a sample schedule for learners engaging in fully online instruction. On the left side of your screen, you see a sample schedule for the remote learning days of our hybrid model. Um, please note that this is not the only way to plan out a remote learning day, but rather a sample of how it could look. Beneath the hybrid sample, you see a schedule based off of time allotments. The purpose of this is to provide a more flexible schedule option for our families um, so that instruction can take place at a time that fits for um, whatever families need. Ultimately, we hope to provide the same caliber of high quality data in driven instruction that you've come to expect from the Ames Community School District. Thanks. Sorry, that's me, Laura Clausen. I teach kindergarten. Um, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about recess. And we know that recess promotes all of the great things about school, it promotes social and emotional learning, physical activity, and a time where students can engage with other peers um, and have some interactions that they don't get in the classroom. So it's a great time. Um, because these are really important factors, we wanna make sure that we um, are able to have the students participate in um, in those recess minutes just like they have before, only a little bit differently. So as you can see on the slide, they have divided our playground into four zones. And so each class will wash their hands before and after recess. They'll go out just in their cohort um, and they'll just go out to their designated area for that day. Those designated areas will rotate. So they'll get new opportunities to play on the different areas. Um, but as at this time, um, those areas will change every day. And so they'll, they'll only be on the soccer field on day one, for instance, and then they'll move to um, the equipment. So um, there'll also be additional equipment available for those other areas as soon as, um, as those come in from the order. Hi there, my name is Megan Olson and I teach fourth grade here at Edwards. Um, I'm going to just briefly talk about what the water stations and bathroom breaks will look like for the kiddos. So we're currently in the process of adding two additional water filler stations in our building. So staying hydrated is obviously important for learning. And so if you are able to uh, add a water bottle to your back to school shopping list. Um, for those who don't have access to a water bottle, we are going to have uh, community, community partners to help us provide some. If a student forgets their water bottle, a disposable cup will be provided. Students will use their water bottle, um, will need to take their water bottle home once a week, minimum for cleaning. Uh, please write your child's name on their water bottle as well. And if you're looking to get in the school spirit, we do have some added to the little cyclone option on our online apparel store. So restrooms will be frequently disinfected throughout the day and deep cleaned every evening. Uh, every other stall or urinal will be closed to ensure social distancing guidelines. Two kiddos will be allowed in a restroom at one time and one person at the sink. Floor signage will also provide visuals to help ensure social distancing while students are waiting to use the restroom. And grade levels will schedule whole classroom restroom breaks. In between those restroom breaks, students will also be able to use the restroom as they're needed. Okay, hello Edwards families. I am Becky Leonard. I'm a third grade teacher here at Edwards. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about snacks. We are keeping most of the same snack rules. You will continue to be able to send a snack uh, with your child, a healthy snack. And 
Uh, something that we're changing is we're gonna have a snack time. And for the most part, our snack time will take place outside when possible. Um, and I know that we've had lots of parents that have volunteered to send snacks and we are going to continue to allow that as well. Um, although none of that is required. If your kid doesn't wanna bring a snack, don't bring a snack. Um, we just um, require that the snacks be individually wrapped and um, sent in with your student instead of you dropping them off. And obviously we will only be eating outside if possible. So we'll have a plan B for when winter rolls around or rainy days. My name is Erica Westbrook and I'm the art teacher at Edwards. And students will be able to participate in art, media, music, and PE. However, this year classes will be held in the student's classroom or outdoors. The gym will still be used for PE. Related arts teachers will, fo will follow Ames Community School District guidelines for instruction, use of materials, the physical environment, and equipment safety in regards to their respective classes. Students will be able to participate in band and orchestra. At this time, all lessons will be done virtually. Please can contact your child's band or orchestra teacher if you have any questions. Hello, my name is Jennifer Pinto and I'm one of the special ed teachers here. Um, and we'll be, I'll be talking about students with um, success, ESL, ELP, special ed 504s. So in all delivery models, we remain committed to meeting the needs of each and every student we serve. Even in on an online learning setting, we will continue to provide services that meet the unique needs of our learners. We will work to remove barriers to foster success and to provide the support needed for all learners regardless of the delivery model. We will make every attempt possible to keep students in the classroom cohorts while supporting their individual needs. In the event students need to be pulled out of the classroom cohort environment to receive individualized services, the following safety precautions will be implemented. Students will wash, um, sanitize their hands um, before and after leaving their classroom cohort. Social distancing of three to six feet apart will be maintained in all settings. Dust, chairs, and frequently touched surfaces and items will be disinfected between classes. And in some cases, the student's special service team may decide the student requires additional days on site. The visual shows guidelines that will be used to assist in the decision-making of that process. Hi, my name is Pam Sassman and I am the school and family counselor at Edwards Elementary School. Um, so there's an acronym SEBMH and um, as you can see, it's a social, emotional, behavioral, mental health um, of our Edwards staff, students and families is at the forefront of our thinking as we plan for the coming school year. Partnerships are currently being developed with local mental health agencies to offer additional support during this unprecedented time. Edwards teachers have made a commitment to connect with their students and families on a weekly to bi-weekly basis when we are in hybrid or continuous learning models. And additionally, we are currently identifying the needs and following up based upon the feedback received from the parent family R2L or Return to Learn survey. Please reach out to myself. Pamela Sassman is the name that the email is under, Pamela Sassman, and, um, I, and then, or Amber Franzine. She is this year our student and family advocate at Edwards. She's wonderful, and um, that's F-R-A-N-Z-E-E-N -E -E for email. That's the best way to reach us. So it's Pamela Sassman or Amber Franzine um, for the, uh, for the um, near future. Um, and if you have any additional information or questions, please do get a hold of us. Okay, thank you so much. And students will be provided a computer bag that should be used to transport their Chromebook to and from school. Chromebooks will be taken home weekly, aligning with the students last week on site day. Students will also receive an additional charger. So one for home and one for at the school.
Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Allison Moses. I'm actually the new school nurse here at Edwards, so I'm looking forward to working with everybody this year. Um, with safety in mind, uh, we've had a few changes this year. We're going to have two nursing stations, so we're going to have a well room and a sick room. So that way we can keep our well students and our sick, stu sick students separate. So our well room will continue to be utilized for generalized health concerns and medications. And then our sick room will be for our um, staff or patients, or excuse me, staff or students who are exhibiting any COVID-19 symptoms. So uh, the teacher would notify us by making a call to the office and then the student would be sent to the sick room. And then if the student is determined to be ill, we would um, call and let you know that the, they do need to be um, picked up and they would be picked up outside upon your arrival. So you would just wanna make sure you call the office and then one of us would bring the student out to you. Um, a couple of other things that we're doing a little bit differently is we're managing our classrooms um, with a first aid kit and with the more generalized um, health concerns, we're gonna triage those like you know, a skin knee, a bump, a bruise. Um, we'll also have ice packs in each of the wings available to our um, staff so that they can utilize those within the classrooms rather than having our students move throughout the hallways. I look forward to meeting each of you. Um, before we go into the q and I really quickly want to, um, update we had I had in we had it in the slide that breakfast would have choice um, and that that is not accurate there is one choice for breakfast um, so I apologize for any confusion on that one can so I think where can somebody start asking some Q&A questions that we haven't been able to answer yet yeah before we do that um, I, I do want to sorry to interrupt Jessica but I will um, prompt our participants now that um, the Edwards team is done with their presentation, um, we can start to transition into the hand raising part of asking questions. And so um, I'm gonna, we'll give it a few moments um, to see if somebody does have a question. I hope somebody does. Um, but in the meantime, you know, if there is a, a question in the Q&A, we can certainly tackle that and I'll continue to monitor um, anyone who has raised their hand to ask a question. Actually, well, um, Jessica, I'll, I'll ask a question. Um, what can parents expect, you know, that that week before school starts in, in the parent teacher conference? I know we've had that question in, in um, other meetings. And so if you could talk through that, and then I do start to see some hands being raised. So we'll go to those next then. So that, are you talking about the mini conferences? That, yeah. Yep. So your, um, your teacher, we will uh, send out a scheduler to schedule those um, those meetings, and they're going to last about 15 to 20, me 20 minutes. And your teacher will, um, you'll have the opportunity to do a video conference. Um, you can bring your child with, with you so the child can see his or her teacher, um, and you're just going to get to know each other. It's just time, that initial um, time to build a relationship. Um, you will have the opportunity to let the teacher know information that you feel they need to know. They're going to share a little bit about themselves, um, but just really a time to connect with each other. Great. Thank you so much. You know, that's a really important week um, for not only the students, but I know the teachers as well to start developing those connections. And, you know, being we have to do it virtually, I just, it makes it even more important. So thank you exactly. for that. Uh, Brooke, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, this um, maybe, I'm not sure this is for everyone, but I'm, I'm curious about orchestra and how that instruct, instruction will resume if it does resume at all. My little boy is really eager to get back to that. Thank you. Yes, thank you for asking. Um, I think a lot of us are eager to get back to those um, normal, typical things that we enjoy to do so much. We know that we want to continue with orchestra, continue with band, um, because children like like your, your boy just excel in those areas. As of right now, band and orchestra are going to be virtual. Um, so your, your son's orchestra um, teacher will be reaching out and um, scheduling a time that they can meet um, to have those lessons.
Lisa, you can go ahead and ask your question. Um, yeah, my question was for people who are 100% virtual, um, what kind of support are you going to give to the parents as far as like knowing what the curriculum is um, for the kids for the day and just kind of being able to co-teach in some respects since, mm -hmm. um, since the kids will be 100% virtual? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I like your, your co-teaching and that thought is we, we understand um, that you guys as parents are really taking on a commitment here also when you um, choose for your child to engage in 100% on learning. Um, what I, I can tell you is that we are continuing to um, finalize all of those plans for our virtual campus, um, but those, the teachers, uh, your child's teacher, will have a, a mini conference also. So they will be reaching out to you. Um, so you can start to ask those specific questions and they can give you very specific questions or answers on the, the instruction uh, that your, your child's going to engage in. Great, thank you. Renee, you can go ahead. Renee, I see you're muted. All right, we will come back to Renee. Alicia, go ahead. Yeah, um, we will be walking our student to um, the school um, as we just live a block away. Then I was just had a question. She's a kindergartner, so she's going to be going all the way over to the playground entrance. Is there a certain way you want walkers to walk them to school? Sorry. No. Um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, or um, do you want us to stay on the west side of the school and then have the kids go all the way over? Or what, what do you want that process to look like? Thank you for asking that. Um, and, and you do not have to ever apologize for the baby crying in the background. <laughs> I often um, navigate one on my lap um, during meetings. So I totally um, relate to, to that. So don't ever apologize. <laughs> um, when you're walking uh, her to the, the kindergarten door, you can walk on, on, on school grounds on campus and just go use the front walkway in front of the building. Um, and just walk her around and there will be a teacher there then to assist her into the building and into her class. The only thing that we ask is that you just have a mask on or a face covering. Okay. Lisa, go ahead. Yeah, another question about um, students that are 100% remote. Um, will, and thank you for your answer for the last one too. Um, Will they have access to um, written worksheets? Um, how are the, what kind of supplies will they have as far as um, written material? Um, will there be an interaction between, you know, they complete something at home and then we have to um, give it, you know, physically to the teacher. Mm -hmm. What? How do you sure. envision that? Because you know, the spring was one hundred percent virtual, so there was no, um, there was very little written materials that we were given. And so I, um, I can tell you that this spring online learning and this fall online learning, this school year online learning is going to look a lot different. Um, we are really, I here at Edwards anyways, and I, I, I can probably attest to this across the district, are really working hard um, and challenging our classroom teachers to re-envision their craft, um, to recreate, redesign instruction as how we know it. Um, so we want to create, um, units and, and lesson design through that virtual learner. And that goes for instructors that are on campus and instructors that are on the offsite that are, are engaging in teaching through the virtual campus. 
Um, so a lot of the work that's going to be done is based off of Google Classroom. Um, and, and it won't be a lot of paper pencil. Um, the teacher will, they'll, there will be a mix of um, live instruction and asynchronous instruction. Um, but the day will look much more like a typical uh, day, an on-site day. Um, and the, as far as the, the instruction, the standards, the units, um, the scope and sequence of all that is going to mirror what the child would get on site. Because like we said, we want to make sure that those transitions are flawless and, and fluid if they do decide to come back on campus. Um, and does that help explain it a little bit more? Jessica, can, can I add on to that just a little bit? A hundred, yes. Um, so if, if you've elected to um, have 100% online uh, instruction, so you've, you've enrolled in our virtual campus, um, your child will be assigned an Ames Community School District teacher that is only teaching um, online classes. So they don't have a mix of online uh, students and um, on-site students, they have 100% online, their, their full roster is online. Um, those teachers are also engaging in what we call professional learning communities that support um, both online and on-site students. So they'll be uh, meeting regularly with teachers that are providing um, our students who, who have elected to be on-site. So the, the goal there is to make a seamless transition um, by partnering them together and um, allowing them to design and create their instruction together. Austin, thank you. All right, great. You know, I keep seeing um, more hands coming up and, and that's wonderful. That's what we want because we do know that there are questions out there. I'm gonna pivot for a moment and we like to take an opportunity during these building specific meetings to touch on a few common questions that we do receive at, at the district level as well. And, and one of those is to talk a bit about our phased in the first four weeks of the school year, our phased in hybrid and Department of Education guidance. And so I'm going to send it over to Superintendent Reisner to talk about that. Thank you so much. Great job, Edwards team. Um, it's been excellent hearing from all of you and the teachers. Um, your participation is just wonderful. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Um, yes, I did want to take just a minute. I know there are questions around um, that first four weeks not meeting uh, the requirements set forth in the governor's proclamation. Um, we continue to work with the department, the department of Education to um, try to gain common ground and um, get that plan approved. Uh, we are hoping that um, that will happen and that we will not have any problem with um, the time if that doesn't happen. Um, we've heard a little bit about, oh, we're going to have to go to like July 10th or something, and that is not the case. We are going to um, look within our internal structure of our the way we have our calendar set up to identify times um, that are actually teacher training times or times that um, were not student contact times that we could turn into student contact hours. Um, so we appreciate the union's work with us on that. The teachers union has been great to work with us um, to look at identifying those times. We have two that we know of right away. For example, there's a day in October and another day, I believe, in January. Um, so those are two days right there that we can gain time back um, and have that be student contact time. There's some other um, creative scheduling ideas that, that we are in the process of looking at. So um, I want to make sure that that question gets answered in a way that, nope, we're not going to not um, come into compliance at some point. Um, it really goes off of the total hours at the end of the year. 
Um, and so it's not hours per week or per month, um, it's hours at the end of the year. And so um, we will have the ability to work that in if um, for some reason our plan wasn't to get approved, but we continue to work with the Department of Education on that. Great, thanks Superintendent Reisner. 1080, those are, that's the number of hours we need in a year. <laughs> Always remember that. Uh, Lisa, you can go ahead. Yeah, I just had a follow up question just how um, I was wondering how it was organized as far as um, the virtual teachers will Edwards students that are virtual be with an Edwards virtual teacher or could they be from anyone from the Ames Community School Elementary. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking that I. I can tell you that we're working uh, very hard to um, determine what teachers will be supporting what students virtually. Um, just like there are some students and families that have chose not to engage in, in the learning on site because of, of the personal reasons. We also have some staff that have requested that they um, not uh, be on site during during school hours also because of the personal reasons for them. So our, our goal is once we get the numbers in um, of students that have requested online uh, learning, then we're gonna do, then we'll match um, the staff request with those student requests. Um, I, can't, we, I can't promise you that, that if an Ed, Edwards student, student will for sure be matched up with an Edwards virtual teacher but we will try to um, align those as, as much as we can. What I can tell you though, is that um, our online teachers, as Austin said, will be engaging in the um, PLCs with our, our buildings. Okay, will, um, will there be one virtual teacher? Like there's kind of a homeroom teacher for elementary kids will there be one virtual teacher for like grade three yeah Jessica I can okay I can hear just a little bit hi Lisa um hi we are working uh, over the weekend and, and into next week. We know we, we want to be able to answer these questions as soon as possible. Right now we're looking at rostering students. So um, not all third grade students in a virtual campus will have the same third grade teacher because we'll need more than one um, potentially. Um, and so, but your student would only have one teacher so they would be rostered in just like they would be if they were in um, bricks and mortar or on campus um, okay and as as it's been said they'll have opportunities for synchronous learning so um, what we didn't do in the spring they'll have time for small groups their rostered teacher will be setting up um, time for you with you and your family and your students and and um, providing feedback doing assessments um, providing some instruction um, during that virtual campus or remote campus as well Thank you. Christy, I think I would feel bad if I missed the opportunity. Most people on, on here probably know you. Hello, yeah. Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Yeah, she's our new director of teaching and learning, and we love having her um, lead our district in that capacity. Um, but you know, this is the Edwards meeting, so. It's we're, a little we're... bittersweet. I, I have a pretty big place in my heart for Edwards and, and Ames, but um, Edwards for sure. Don't tell anybody, <laughs> but it's good to see you. Um, we're excited to um, start a, another year. Um, All right, um, next is Ludmia. Yes, hello. Um, I have a question. Um, when the kids will have opportunity to uh, resume in-person lessons for orchestra and band? Um, so that's something that we will um, continually monitor and, and process. I can't give you a, a exact date. Um, our, our goal is to ensure safety of every everyone, students and staff. Um, and so right now we find it best practice to um, hold orchestra and band online.
Jessica, did you have um, one other thing that you wanted to show? I did just at the very end. Are we getting there or do we have a little bit? I, it'll. We got a little time. <laughs> it'll just take a few seconds. Okay. Um, well, let's keep uh, That's great. I, I was continuing to look at the raised hands. I'm going to pivot one more time and I'm going to introduce Dr. Kathy Arnold. She is our emergency management coordinator. And during these meetings, you know, um, we do get a lot of questions, you know, like what does happen when school starts and, and we have a positive case, you know, within our buildings, um, whether that's a student or a staff. And so um, she is heading all of that up for us as, as a district. And so I wanted to give her an opportunity to talk about that. Sure, thank you, Eric. Um, while we are going to do everything we can to try to make sure to put in practices and processes to keep COVID out of our buildings, we know that that might occur. And so wanted to uh, talk through the process a little bit. If we do get notification of a positive COVID test from student or staff, we will then uh, work with the Story County Health Department directly. They're gonna collaborate and tell to give us recommendations on what to do next, if that might be quarantine in a classroom um, or you know, any other advice that they might give to us. We're going to be using seating charts um, and really tracking to make sure that we're catching all possible exposures that might occur. And, and after that collaboration with Story County Health, we will then be communicating uh, with those who have been exposed and um, making sure that we're closing the loop and, and communicating as much as we can to the parents. Great, thank you so much. Um, and I think it was in yesterday's district communication, we did post um, the flow chart on, on how we do that. And I know Kathy, you're working on additional stuff that we will also release to the community as well, as far as an FAQ, because we know that there are more questions and I know that you're working on that as well. Um, we're gonna continue and go back to some more raised hands. We have a couple more. Allison, you can go ahead. Hi, thanks. Um, I think I saw somewhere that we'll have the opportunity to um, ask for certain days, and I know we have two kids, and I'm hoping to get them on the same day, but what's the process to request days for the beginning of the year? So um, I can tell you that your uh, two children will be on the same day. Um, we, that, that is a guarantee, um, unless you request them be on different days, um, but your, your kiddos will be um, on campus on the same days. In regards to requests, um, you can send me your requests, but I do want to uh, make sure that I'm clear and that not all requests are going to be able to be granted um, or, or honored. It's a, it's a big balancing act, all of this, and trying to get um, kids in the right groups um, on the right days with the right uh, sibling, if they have siblings, um, older or younger, and then just to be able to keep our classrooms appropriately um, spaced with the right amount of students. So if you do have a request, you can send that request to me. Um, but I do want to let you know, we'll, we'll try to honor that, but we just will not be able to honor all requests. Brittany, you can go ahead. Hey, thank you. I think Jessica just actually answered most of my question. Um, oh. Sorry, Brittany, I think I cut you off. Hey, Eric. I know. No worries. Um, will we be able to find out who is in our kids' class this year, if possible? Or is that something that will stay just kind of parents texting each other or whatnot? Um, and I just do want to say it's a great plan. You guys did an awesome job on this. And our kids are really excited to go back. Um, and seeing all this makes us feel really good about it, too. So great work. Brittany, that um, we appreciate that. We always enjoy a little bit of feedback. Um, we, I can tell you our team worked hard, um, hard on this plan. Uh, so we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, as far as the knowing who's what kids are in your class, we can't release that uh, just for privacy privacy reasons. Um, so it, it is going to be the the old school method of, of text and and talking with your neighbors to see who's in whose class. Sarah, you can go ahead and ask your question. Um, hello, thank you very much. 
Um, I immediately apologize if this has always been uh, has already been discussed. I, I was able to join only ten minutes ago. So my question would be, um, my first question is, when uh, as parents will know uh, the classroom uh, assignment? Mm -hmm. That's the first question. And the second one, um, so I too have the same problem of um, being, um, I need to be at work on two days uh, a week, um, for sure, on Thursdays and Fridays. So I wanted to know if it's possible to request that the kids, you know, are placed in groups that go at school during those days. And you already answered that we can submit our request. I understand uh, you might not be able to satisfy all of them, but uh, will you um, pause somewhere the email address uh, to which we need to send these requests? So these are my two questions. Thank you very much. Absolutely, Sarah. Um, one of the Edwards teachers will put my um, email in uh, the q and I also am going to send out uh, a follow-up email either tomorrow or uh, Monday morning. So you can just respond to that email um, with your request. In regards to the class list, those, um, I, I, I guess I just want to first empathize with you um, in not knowing yet who your your child's classroom teacher is. Um, please know though that we are working hard on our end to get everything aligned. Um, we just don't want to release information and then it not be accurate. We want to do it once and we want to do it right. Um, so the we're, we're looking um, that the deadline for the 100% online requests are Friday. We've got to manage um, some pieces, logistical pieces on our end next week. And so hopefully um, the following week, sometime we can get, get those out. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanna give a shout out to the Edwards team. They are doing a great job working through the Q&A. Um, we are starting to trend towards the end here. Um, we do have another hand raised, um, so we'll certainly get to that. There's, there's a couple and then we'll, we'll manage time, but I do wanna give Jessica um, a couple moments at the end as well to, to wrap up. So Jody, you can go ahead. Jody, we'll keep Jody, we on. can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, sorry. Um, my daughter is going to be uh, attending ACPC in the morning there, and I didn't know if there was a different spot to drop off than the, where uh, the kindergarten's normal drop off is, and then also what time they are allowed to show up for that, if it's any different from the different um, start times. I believe I, I'm so sorry, Jody. I think I just answered that in the um, in the chat, and I said, um, and Jessica, if this is not correct, please correct me. But I believe they're still entering through the front door, um, the same as they did last year. I'm not clear yet on what time they'll be able to begin. Um, Jessica, did you have information on that? I don't, I don't. And I was thinking we were gonna get through all, all the questions and have the answers, but you you got me on one. Um, I do not know the start time of ACPC, but that um, I can easily get and shoot it out in my follow-up email. Great, and then I think ACPC will be sharing information as well. Yep. Thank you. All right, Brad, go ahead. Brad, you may be muted. There you go. Oh, maybe not. Sophia, you can go ahead. Great, thank you so very much for all the leadership and efforts that you all are taking. Really appreciate having this forum for conversation. As a follow-up to Brittany's question about releasing information, I understand that you're not able to release information of students or families but is there a way for us as parents to opt in and 
um, allow that information to be shared. I'm just thinking for working families, um, the more planning we can do in advance is helpful and even to minimize the risk of exposure to multiple groups of other individuals. If we have the same you know, cohort peers in that same small group for pods that they're not in, um, when they're not in the classroom, I think that would help minimize the overall um, opportunity for a risk and, and create some, some streamlined online learning for, for working families. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I get the, the goal in that. Um, I am going to tell you, I'm going to look a little bit more into that to see if there's some creative, creative avenues that we can go down. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll look more into that to see if we can, if we can be creative. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you, Principal Sharp. Um, one idea, uh, and again, this is uh, there's some logistics to be worked out with it. It's it's a lot safer from a FERPA perspective if we were to facilitate um, meetings to say, oh, this this cohort group or this session can join a Zoom meeting like this, and then you share your information by choice in that type of a meeting rather than us sharing out your information. There are some creative strategies that we can look to for that. Thank you. All right, we're gonna take our last question for the evening. Sarah, you can go ahead. Yeah, thanks. My question was about 504s and IEPs. And while I understand we'll have a chance to meet with the, the counselor, um, without knowing how an accommodation might look virtually versus in person, it's hard to make the choice about what will work best for the student. So. I guess I'm just wondering, like, how can we prepare or, um, you know, or are we just to assume that we'll have to switch learning modes mid through the school year if one's not working? Um, I wish I could give you a concrete answer on this. I really do. Um, but this is, is one of those that um, I, yes, I don't yeah. have. Yeah. Jessica, uh, I can help a little bit. Darcy does. Um, I'm Darcy Cousins, Director of Special Education. Um, and I'm kind of trying to process as well how to help you prior. I know you're making decisions tomorrow. We have developed a resource for our special ed teachers and um, we'll be sharing it also with counselors and principals that are leading 504s. And this resource is one that talks about accommodations and not only what accommodations was your child receiving when they attended school, but there could be accommodations that weren't in the IEP or the 504 that they are now gonna need um, due to um, remote learning and that they may need that if you choose total remote learning or even in the hybrid because um, students are gonna be learning every single day. Um, sometimes they're gonna be learning in the classrooms with us and then other times they're gonna be participating through remote learning. So we are gonna have to look at those accommodations um, for all of our students um, and, so, and the teachers have those resources. Uh, we, it's a pretty, extensive resource with lots of links that we have not sent out to parents, but they will be using that when they talk with you during those conferences. And I can, I can commit that um, myself and the Edwards team um, will work hard to make sure that those, um, your child's getting what they need. Um, we will, we will figure out how to support them in whatever model you choose for your child. They will receive those accommodations. And um, Jessica actually helped develop um, the resource. So I know she's very familiar with it and, um, and it, it has, it, it extends to a wide variety of areas of academics, but also we know some students are just going to have a more difficult time um, tuning into the, um, some of the online and we have some ideas there. Uh, and we're always searching for more of those ideas, like Jessica said. All right, great, everyone. Um, I, I wanted to thank all the participants for coming on and, and asking these questions. We do know there is a lot. We will be sure to share out the slides, and this video is 
already on YouTube and, it, and it'll be there. Um, but Jessica, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, close out this meeting this evening. All right. I think um, Jody's going to just touch base on PTO real quick. And then I, I've just got one final word I'd like to share. Yeah, thanks. I wear a couple hats at Edwards. I'm also a parent. So I am the communications chair of the PTO. Um, the PTO is an all-inclusive volunteer organization whose primary purpose is to support the students, staff, and parents, families, guardians at Edwards Elementary. This year, PTO is definitely going to look a little bit different just because some of our bigger events that we have um, are large gatherings, and that does not work this year. So our main goals, um, sports teachers, students, and families in the return to learn using time, resources, and financial means continue our fundraising efforts in a safe and responsible manner, such as readathon, fall mum sales in lieu of the spring plant sale, uh, also so that we can get that in, and continue community activities in a safe and responsible manner, such as virtual science night. Uh, there will be a yearbook for sure. Uh, reverse teacher parade for back to school night. We'll be supporting that with uh, the ice cream that you usually get at the ice cream social as you leave. And how can you help? Uh, tune into meetings. A calendar will be published soon. Uh, look for updates via email from the PTO. Those will be coming from me. And then follow us on social media. So especially our new kinder parents or anyone coming into the district, uh, Edwards Elementary School PTO on Facebook. And if you have any uh, ideas on how to help us or things that you think would be helpful or if you're willing to volunteer your time um, or if you just have questions about the PTO, feel free to email me at edwardspto.ames at gmail.com. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah. So before we depart tonight, I just want to leave you, um, leave you all with my favorite quote. It reads, you're braver than you believe, stronger than you seem, and smarter than you think. So as we navigate the 2021 school year, things are going to be different, even difficult at times. Um, so in moments that you don't feel brave and you don't feel strong and you don't feel smart, lean on us. Lean on your Edwards family. We're here and together we've got this. We're better together, folks. Let's do it. Good night, everyone. Have a good night.